Hi cats, welcome back. So I'd like you to go to your journals because last time you wrote down what your personal circumstances in life were at the moment. Uh, so if that was yesterday, they may have changed by now, but just a general sense of what's been going on, maybe at school, at work, with your parents, with your other members of your family, your friends, whatever it may be that's difficult, financial. I know that's a big problem for a lot of us. So you have written those down. Now, let's move on. You will be needing your journal at the end of this session, um, but yeah, it's coming up. Okay. Low self-esteem can be a problem in itself and be a risk factor for other problems. Sometimes low self-esteem can be a problem in and of itself because it puts the person at risk for experiencing other problems such as depression. So it's one of those what came first riddles, right? So was the depression there first? Did that bring up the low self-esteem? Because guilt and shame you know, it's very common in depression, all right? Or did the low self-esteem maybe from ingrained effects of life circumstances, how you grew up, the voices that you have, not necessarily uh, audible voices, but uh, the, the self-talk that's instilled by perhaps negative influences as you were growing up. So if you were bullied or were a victim of child abuse or neglect, that can bring on uh, the depression. So one feeds into the other. And having persistent suicidal thoughts and sometimes um, in other conditions like borderline personality disorder, there are persistent thoughts of suicide and self-harm and I know that suicide and self-harm are are different okay um, but the thoughts are there and sometimes the actions are there also and this and it happens in um, in depression and anxiety and other conditions so eating disorders also can go along with depression and it can go along with uh, low self-esteem. So if you are feeling undeserving of eating, and then again, there are other conditions that have a depressive quality, like the dysphoria and borderline personality disorder, and the emptiness that, um, you know, it can also involve self-regulating with things like eating too much, binging and purging, or uh, starvate, self-starvation, right? And social phobia. Okay. Okay, so yeah, the low self-esteem can put you at risk for social phobia if you have a predispos predisposition because sometimes we come into the world I mean definitely everyone comes into the world with their own temperament some people come in really sensitive so it's much more likely that you're going to end up with self-esteem issues and depression issues um, or at risk for a personality disorder with this super sensitive temperament, right? So we call that a vulnerability factor. So you may recognize that while things might be okay at the moment and you don't feel very depressed or anxious or experience other difficulties, things might not have been that well in the past, okay? So everything is changing. The only thing that doesn't change is change. So change is a constant. Things get better, things get worse, right? So if your mood often fluctuates depending on your circumstances or you have found 
you have had depression in the past and you recognize that you might have low self-esteem, then this could put you at risk for going back into the depression. Low self-esteem is a vulnerability factor that is like something hiding in the background that could just jump out and get you when you least expect it. So the low self-esteem is like the monster in the closet, but we have to tame this monster, tame the beast, we can do it. So have you had problems with depression, anxiety, or any other mental health problems in the past? It could be um, uh, an eating disorder, uh, borderline personality disorder, or another type of personality disorder. It can be a lot of things. It doesn't have to be anything that even exists as a category in the DSM because I think a smart clinician will take all this stuff symptom by symptom and look at that rather than um, just, you know, looking it up in the book and going by the book. So have, so note if you've had any of these problems in the past with your mental health and do you think that low self-esteem might put you at risk for other problems in the future? So could your low self-esteem plunge you back into that mental health problem, back into that mental illness episode, or could it even create another one? So you don't want to add yet another stressor or another issue to what you already have going on, right? Because it's hard enough the way it is. Okay, so just um, make a note of that, write down a few sentences, a paragraph or two, and next time we will pick up with the next lesson. All right. Okay, cats, thank you.